Hey, hope you're doing well. Andy here from Drive Steady, and in this video, I'm reviewing the Lexus LC500. So listen up, when Lexus started making cars like the LFA and this LC500, they weren't really going after the spec sheet, but rather driver emotion and feel. Fast forward, and now the LC500 has been out for a couple years, and I've been wanting to drive one for the longest time. And now I finally have one. So let's see what this thing's all about in this review of the Lexus LC500. All right, so before getting started, a big thank you to Keys Mercedes for allowing me to review this LC500 today. If you're interested in any new or pre-owned Mercedes car, please give them a call. They will gladly take care of you. They've also got a pretty interesting inventory of non-Mercedes pre-owned cars like this LC500. So now, the exterior of this thing, and when I first saw it, I thought it was one of the coolest and most unique looking cars available. I mean, the styling cues are mostly unmatched, and like most underappreciated cars, which the LC500 definitely is, you really have to pay close attention to see these things. The triple beam headlights, the fighter jet inspired taillights, and the fact that the cabin and where you sit is practically in the center of the car are just a few details I'm talking about. All right, so I wanted to point out how much of a bargain these cars have become. You can get an early model from 2018 with some miles on it for in the high 60s or low 70s. Now, this is basically the same price that your local Honda dealership is probably charging for that new Honda Pilot in their showroom. Now, I'm not really one to pitch a sale, but whether you're looking at this example or any of the other clean ones that are on the market, I think the LC500's price of entry is worth it just on the exterior alone. All right, so now let's talk about another selling point for this car, and that's this magical engine. So this is a five liter naturally aspirated eight cylinder making 471 horsepower and 398 pounds feet of torque with a 7,300 RPM redline. It's mated to a 10 speed automatic and puts power down to the rear wheels only. Now, given that this is a big V8 motor and the LC500 isn't a small car and is really geared towards GT and luxury features, it is rather heavy at almost 4,300 pounds. Now, what this means, the weight distribution, 54 in the front, 46 in the rear. So, a forward bias, but what this really translates to is, is a 0 to 60 time of 4.3 seconds, which is very respectable, but as I mentioned at the outset of the video, Lexus is really looking for driver feel and engagement in this LC500. Now, because people are going to drive this on a daily basis, gas mileage is 16, 26, and 19 combined. But who really cares about that when you've got an active sports exhaust? So let's go around to the back and take a listen to what this thing sounds like. All right, so let me know what you think of the LC500 exhaust in the comment below. It definitely took me by surprise because it's so raspy and it's got that good old 
naturally aspirated V8 rumble. So some of the details back here, you have an electronically deploying rear spoiler, which you can control using a button on the interior. The tail lights are very unique and they've got mirrors in them to kind of reflect when you take a closer look at this thing. It's unlike anything I've seen and very clever, unique design that I haven't seen in a tail light period. So now let's switch gears to some practicality and let's talk about the trunk. So you have multiple ways of opening it. There's a button on the interior, there's a button on the key, and then there's also a comfort access method right here using this button on the taillight. So once you open this thing, you're greeted with a decent amount of space. So if you wanted to fit a larger piece of luggage in here, you can. You're going to have to shove it in really deep to use the interior of the trunk because this is not a deep trunk going down to the floor. Now, as far as the opening goes, it's pretty wide. It's not intrusive. You can fit a bunch of stuff in here. Uh, and I certainly don't see any issues with taking this on a long weekend getaway, so long as you're traveling with two people and you're not really heavy packers. Uh, but on a day-to-day -day basis, no real issues. But just keep in mind, it's not the biggest trunk that I've seen for a two-door GT car like this. It's also not the smallest trunk. Now, one thing Lexus is going to get a bonus for is giving me a grab handle because I don't have to put my fingerprint on the exterior paint. That's always a bonus. So that's basically the trunk and the rear end. Let me take you around to the side and talk to you about the wheels, tires, brakes, and suspension of this LC500. All right, so let's start off with the suspension. And this LC500 comes standard with adaptive ride, and that gives you the ability to tailor it based off of your driving conditions, whether you're driving slow, whether you're driving fast, and you've got Comfort, Eco, Sport, and Sport Plus. Now, because this is the inscription package, it comes standard with uh, rear wheel steering and a mechanical limited slip differential. If you wanted to just option these in without an ins inscription package, you can certainly do that. I believe it costs about $5,500. Now, beyond that, these wheels, these are also optional on the standard LC500, but standard on this inscription package. These are 21 inch wheels on all four corners. They're by eight and a half on front and nine and a half in the rear. They've got a really nice gloss black finish that contrasts beautifully with this flare yellow metallic paint. And inside the wheel barrel, you have pretty substantial brakes. I was very surprised. The rotors measure 15.7 inches in diameter in the front and 14 inches in the rear, six pistons up front and four pistons in the rear. You've got a beautiful yellow painted caliper, which again contrasts really well with the paint and the black wheel. And of course, the Lexus lettering and the logo in black. Now, as far as the tires go, 245s up front, 275s in the rear. Now, depending on what day it is and what options you got, you're either gonna get Michelins or Dunlops on the LC500. So that's basically it here. Let me jump onto the inside and show you what it's like on the interior. All right, so now the interior of the LC500. And because this is a inspiration package car, you do get a unique interior with these yellow door panels that are covered in some um, suede material. And then the interior is a mix of black and white leather on the seats. You have yellow stitching and that yellow stitching continues on the dash over here and on the center armrest. It's definitely a unique look, something of an acquired taste. I personally would never get a yellow colored interior but um, it, it, I don't know if, if you like it then this is your thing if you don't the Lexus does give you the option for black uh, beige and red color interiors so uh, as far as some of the details go in here my overall thoughts of this thing it is an extremely high quality and comfortable interior. Uh, all of the fit, all of the finish, uh, the materials in here, everywhere you touch is of great quality. Soft leather, soft materials, even over here where my knee is resting is a soft material. And I mean, I don't have anything to complain about. The center console here has these metal brush uh, looking toggle switches for your track and your volume controller. The air conditioning buttons, uh, all of this stuff is of really nice quality and what you would expect in an expensive car like this. Now, first thing I mentioned, it's very comfortable in here and that's mostly due because of the seat. This is an extremely comfortable seat. The leather is very soft. The cushioning is very good. It hugs 
gives you a really nice, you kind of sink into it. It's not aggressive. It does have some holding capability, but there is no adjustable bolstering or anything. But uh, overall, it's a very comfortable seat. Now, in front of me, I have the uh, LFA inspired gauges, which kind of do this mechanical shift to the left and give you a little bit more information about the car. But it is really cool to look at. And when you're driving, you're getting close to the rem limiter, it starts to shake and glow and uh, you can change it using the different drive mode. So it's definitely a cool looking thing. Now, one of the downsides uh, of this car, probably the biggest downside on the interior of this car, or maybe even as a whole, is the infotainment and the screen itself. Now, some of the objective things about it. It's a 10.3 inch screen. It is not touch screen. You have to use this trackpad type controller to interface with it. And this alone is definitely unexpected and not modern. Most modern infotainment systems and screens have touch screens now. So you can just interact using your finger just like you're used to using on your phone. So this is definitely something that you're probably gonna have to get used to. And then the infotainment system, the software itself is, it's not easy to get used to it's cluttered it's not clear uh, I feel like it needs some polishing up some simplification so definitely the weak point of this car is the infotainment screen and the interface with the software now as far as the back seats go I tried to sit behind myself and I was extremely uncomfortable so it's definitely not a selling point don't try and convince anybody that oh there's back seats in there and you're gonna be able to sit back there not really unless you're a rather small individual or a child. So that's basically the interior, the selling points, high quality, good fit and finish, not so selling points, infotainment system, back seats, don't really mention them. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and go to the driving portion of the review and see what this thing feels like behind the wheel. All right, so now the driving portion of the review. And as always, this is what the key looks like. Nothing special at all. It just says Lexus here, nothing about an LC or this being a $100,000 car. Now beyond that, the visibility out front is fantastic. Out the sides, good. Out the back, also very good. Uh, Lexus is giving you a bunch of standard features as far as safety goes, front and rear uh, parking sensors, uh, rear view camera, of course, blind spot monitor, lane keep assist so you are getting a whole bunch of safety features as standard you can add in some extra stuff if you like but uh, it's pretty good right out the box now base price is 93,000 for the 2022 model year this is of course a 2019 you can't get these new anymore but when it was new 107,000 this is listed for 85,000 with 10,000 miles so if you're interested in this car please make sure to contact keys Mercedes and they will gladly take care of you so now let's go ahead and go for a spin, foot on the brake, start, stop. It starts up with a really nice howl. And oh, my seatbelt doesn't want to come on. All right, come on seatbelt. Okay, so let's go ahead and put it in drive and let's see what this LC 500 hype is really all about. Let's go for it. I'm in comfort mode now. And in comfort mode, it's actually really good, but I'll get to that here in a second because I'm gonna get a straight stretch of road and I'm just gonna go for it in Sport Plus. Car. Put it in manual shift mode. pops of the exhaust, the cracks that you get on the upshifts. And when you hit the rev limiter, I remember watching the Savage Geese video and this having a violent shotgun like rev limiter. It is actually pretty cool to bounce it off. And I'm not gonna do that again because this is a dealer car and I'm, I don't wanna mess it up <laughs> for the lack of a better term. Uh, but uh, beyond that, so the, the overall speed of this car is adequate. It, it is that 4.3, 4.4 second time. It's not going to blow your head off with a bunch of speed, but it does have plenty of uh, download torque with that V8. And with the high revving uh, nature of it, it is very fun and engaging to drive, even with a automatic transmission. 
and the exhaust note is, is actually very good as well. So the overall engine speed and character is really the selling point of this car and the character is high. You are getting a lot of feel and a lot of charisma from this engine. Uh, compared to something like the V8, uh, V8 in the uh, BMWs, the 4.4 liter, that sounds okay, but it sounds a little mundane. This has a little bit more character and a little bit more liveliness. Let's see if we can get one more. Yeah, that, that bark that it has on the upshift is really very uh, intoxicating, actually is the right word. And it barks, it barks on the downshift as well. Transmission works really good. All right, that was it. No more rev limiter bouncing, okay? <laughs> Let's get some downshifts. Yeah, it's really nice. The exhaust engine transmission combo works really well. Now, as far as the rest of it, so the steering. So the steering, when I put it in comfort mode, it just very soft, feels like a Lexus. Uh, when you put it in Sport or in Sport Plus, I honestly couldn't tell the difference between the two modes, Sport and Sport Plus, that is. It does get a little firmer, but drive it does get a little firmer but it's not to a point where this becomes a sports car and I'm quickly realizing that I quickly realized it as I was driving this car and that is that this is not a sports car this is a GT car the steering is is actually very direct and very good there's no deadness in it it is very alive but it doesn't feel like a sports car steering uh, the suspension as well it's very geared towards comfort uh, even in sport and sport plus mode i don't feel any stiffness the uh, body soaks up the bumps very nicely uh, so this is not really geared towards sporty driving it's definitely a gt car and there's nothing wrong with putting this thing in comfort mode and driving it like a lexus and this is i think where this car shines and is one of the things that's hidden inside of this car's character. And that is that it's a great dual purpose car. Uh, it does have enough uh, on the street to get you excited with the engine noise and the exhaust barks and the cracks. Uh, but when you put it in comfort mode, you say to yourself, okay, I'm driving a very luxury, a luxurious car with a comfortable suspension and comfortable seats and I'm thoroughly enjoying myself. This is something that you could probably take on a very long road trip and not feel fatigued whatsoever. And it's just, how can I put it? It does Lexus very well. So that's pretty much all I've got. Uh, if you've, I'm just gonna stop here since there's nobody behind me. If you've got any other questions, please send me a comment down below or a message on Instagram at DriveSteady. Otherwise, thank you for watching this video. Until next time, drive steady.